Hey, what's up, everyone? Ross Levitan here from the Locked On Senators podcast with breaking news. The Senators now have their schedule for the rest of the year. Now, every team does, but Ottawa had the most postponed games of anyone, so therefore the most change has occurred. Actually, out of the 12 games that were postponed, they had to rejuvenate three extra just to make them all fit. Now, you're going to get a first look at them right here as I've gone Full graphic designer mode, and you'll be able to see right now where they've placed in those games. So let's start with February. February was the most room they had to play with as it was initially the Olympic break. It's a story and a sad one for another day, but this is how they filled out that part of their schedule. They've got 10 extra games now, only two on the road, eight on home ice, and that will do them well as they start with two pairs of back-to-backs, and a game in the middle. And this is just a very busy stretch from February 7th to the 22nd, playing 10 games. That's going to be a lot to ask, especially when you look at the opponents that are coming through the Canadian Tire Center. There's the New Jersey Devils, the Carolina Hurricanes, the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Boston Bruins twice, the St. Louis Blues, the New York Rangers, the Minnesota Wild, and then their road games, yeah, Buffalo You hope they win, but we saw last night, no game is guaranteed, and then they have to go to Washington as well. So three back-to-backs in February. This is going to be a very difficult stretch for this Senators team. Now let's go to March. And in March, they've only added one game. You could say two, but then the second one where they'll now be in Winnipeg, and shout out any Sens fans who are going to be there, hit us up because you know Pilsy and I will be at that game. They've moved a game forward. So the Islanders, they were supposed to be there on the 24th. Now they're going to be on Long Island on the 22nd before coming to Winnipeg on the 24th. So still a busy schedule. Like check out the first three weeks, right? They've got three games, four games, four games, and now three games as well. That would have been their bye week in late March, and that is no longer the case. So it stays busy there. Now we go to April where... No rest for the wicked here. Hey, Jesus. They changed the game. The Devils game that moved to February. That's going to now be against Nashville on home ice on April 7th. And the two games left were on the road at Seattle, at Vancouver. It seemed this was the only way to go with it, was to make them both back-to-back situation. And now they took out that April 20th game. Right when I saw that initially, I was like, oh, boy. Here we go. Are they going to play three games in a row? We've never seen that in NHL history, and I hope we never do. I'm sure the Players Association would have something to say about that. But there you have it. The Senators, 15 games rescheduled. That's ridiculous. You just have never seen anything like that before, but we've also never seen a year like this before. So I want to get into a couple more stats with you, and we already mentioned the Senators having 15 of their games rescheduled, but... It's going to be a sprint of a marathon to the finish line. 50 games in the next 99 days. So I've got a couple questions here that I want to ask. What do you hope to see from this Senators team during a tough stretch? Does it make it easier to to judge players based on whether or not they're able to maintain the grind of an NHL season? Now, the other side of this as well, and I'm pulling up the rest of the schedule. Let's see. Is there? No. No games in May. So they haven't extended the season. And I think Sens fans might be a little disappointed in that because who doesn't want to see Shane Pinto come back and get an opportunity to play a lot of games? But yes, just like he left school last year, he got into those 12 games. This year, you're going to see a similar situation with Jake Sanderson. And if he's out now, we want him to do well with North Dakota. There's no question about that. If he goes further, it just means he's producing more. And if he's producing more, you're feeling good about that. And I'm pulling up right now too, because I'm curious here, April 7th and April 9th are the final frozen four. Now, North Dakota is the 10th ranked team right now. So I don't think it's a guarantee by any stretch that he'll still be playing, but for argument's sake, let's pretend he is. So Jake Sanderson, Finishes up April 7th. So let's pull up 
the April schedule for the Ottawa Senators. No quarantine requirements anymore. You got to think he's celebrating that weekend. Maybe he joins the team on the Monday. So realistically now, you've added in one game because the 20th got moved. So only one game added in. But this is a legitimate three-week period where Jake Sanderson could be playing NHL games. So let's say he starts off at Boston. Great. So at Boston, home to Toronto. There's two home games here that you just just think ahead. And let's hope that the Senators can get back on track after that tough loss in Buffalo. They've been playing some good hockey of late. And if you add him for those last games, it's only going to help next year, help him get to the level that will bring him, hopefully, to what Sens fans' lofty goals are for Jake Sanderson. So I don't know. Hit us up in the comments. I'm curious to know what you think. Do you prefer Jake Sanderson make it all the way to the Frozen Four? Get that experience, but not get the experience of playing more NHL games? Or if he's out, like that first uh, weekend of the tournament, you're looking at like mid-March. So now pulling up March again, now you're looking at a situation where Pilsy and I could see him in Winnipeg on March 24th. Now, is that good or is that bad? I'll let you decide. But, man, there's going to be a lot of hockey. 99 days to the finish line. 50 games. As the Senators, they're definitely not competing for a playoff spot at this juncture of the game. But what we do know is that they're not going to be an easy out for any team. The Senators, you know that seven of their wins have come against the top 10 teams in the league. They've beaten the Colorados. They've beaten... The uh, as we pull up the league standings, the Tampa Bay's, the Florida's, the Carolinas, the Colorado's, and they're going to have to continue that because, as I showed in February, it's not going to get any easier. I need to pull this up one last time because it is absolutely insane how quickly they were able to fill up the Olympic break. And thank God for that three day break at the end of it. It's like, okay, guys catch your breath. Now, if you're wondering why they didn't schedule any games between the 2nd and the 7th, the NHL All-Star game is that weekend. So Drake Batherson will be heading to Vegas. The game is on the 5th. And then you're looking at getting right back into it on the 7th. So I know it's great to see your homegrown players make it to the All-Star game. But in this situation, imagine they had more. These guys are going to be playing a lot of hockey. It's best for those five days to be spent relaxing rejuvenating and getting set for that sprint to the finish. You know, we're going to be here every step of the way, Monday through Friday. Locked on Senators is your number one home for all things Sens hockey. Wherever you get your audio podcast, this is a little bonus for our YouTube subscribers. We hope you subscribe. Hit the like button right there. It goes a long way for us. And remember to stay locked on to the Senators, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Ross Levitan. Thanks for listening. Plenty of content, including today's Locked On Senators, if you missed it, but the new schedule's out, so I thought I'd drop by and say hello. Have a great day, Sens fans. We'll chat tomorrow 